Hi there, I'm Johnny Engineer Termel, and I have organized a team of 125 plaintiffs who were all stalled in getting their marijuana grow permits um, for way, way, way too many months. We have what we call our Lassard card, which is the Director of Health Canada in under the MMAR said we process applications in under four weeks and renewals in far less. Well, we have people now waiting six months, eight months, 11 months, a lot more than four weeks. So I've organized the, some statements of claim to demand the value of the pot you could have grown during the delay the judge finds objectionable, as well as the cost and the site rent and all those expenses you paid waiting. So two bucks, all you have to do is go to johntermell.com slash kips and the specific file is johntermell.com slash D-E-L-S-C-I-N-S dot PDF for delay statement of claim instructions dot PDF. So join the team. See if we can't hurt these. So this is the article we're going to talk about. Patients take feds to court over backlog in pot home grow permits. The story of the biggest Section 56 med pot class exemption in history affecting 90,000 people and how Health Canada are trying to cover it up. So, I'll be posting an actual um, more in-depth text at my uh, blog, which is at alt.fan.john-termel. And that's from 20 years ago when an alt fan group on Usenet was pretty big. So I've kept it alive since then where I post everything. So this is the article from iPolitics.ca by Kyle Duggan, published on April the 4th, almost two weeks ago. And of course, it should have said backlog due to short staffing. Now, that makes a big difference because if you're complaining that legislation harmed you, you have to show malice. But we're not complaining the legislation harmed us. We're complaining the short staffing of the bureaucracy is what caused the harm. And you don't have to show malice when you claim damages. So this is the biggest in history. When you consider the Allard case had 18,000 permits affected, this one here has 90,000 permits. So, and of course, they missed the opportunity to get that story out because Kyle only interviewed the defendant, Health Canada, and the lawyer for the defendant. <laughs> no patience in this article. So, that's why you call it a limited hangout. Because old CIA expression meant that if you're caught with your dick hanging out, you may as well admit as much as you can before they find out and try and hide as much as you can. It's called the limited hangout. So here's Health Canada tried to rip off the patients by shortchanging them on their permits, got caught, and had to give it all back without letting anybody know they got caught. So this is the limited hangout by Kyle Duggan. Now, what had the patients asked for? A, a declaration that the long processing time for access to cannabis for medical purposes regulations, ACMPR, production registrations, and renewals violates the patient's Section 7 right to life, liberty, security, with no principle of fundamental justice such as war or emergency to necessitate and absolve such violations. And claims remedy in unspecified damages under Section 24 of the Charter in the amount of the value of the applicant's prescription and lost site rent and expenses during any delay which this court may rule inappropriate for a reasonable processing time for registrations for medication. And that's cause of action B later. So Kyle reports on the claim about the delays, but doesn't mention the claim for the damages. Now, per paragraph one. As the application rate skyrockets, Canadian cannabis patients who want to home grow their own medical marijuana have been going to court in droves, citing delays in the permitting, si per permitting system. Now, we got one guy, Igor Majeko, and he shows that the short staffing was from the start. He applied last February or January, beginning of 2017, with a six-month permit. They didn't even get processed in six months. 
The medical document expired, went back to the doctor, got it one for a year. Four months later, still not processed. So he filed one of my statement of claims at the forms at my site. And within a couple of days, well, a week, I think, he got his permit. They hopped to it. So many people have done this now. So as the application rates skyrocket, they're going in droves. But this is from the start that these delays have been there. Now, Health Canada, which issues the permits, hired 30 new staff in response to ballooning permit applications, which rose 101% over the last six months of 2017. Wow, 30 more staff to handle 100% growth. Well, how many staff did they start with? We have to know that before we know whether it worked or not. If they had 10 people and now they got 40, Great, 300% rise. But if they had 300 people and they now got 330, 10% rise to handle 100% new applications? We don't know. He didn't tell us. But I know from other sources that they're now up to 70 staff. So they went from 40 to 70. A 75% increase in staff to handle what they say is 100% increase in application registrations. So that's, anyway, now, uh, without a production permit under the current system, patients become liable to fine and imprisonment if they don't destroy their cannabis. Well, actually, if he'd spoken to some patients, he'd have found out some of them were busted while waiting for their renewals or their permits. So, actual victims. Now, for the department also made a policy change last month to get rid of a, a backdating issue from when a doctor initially prescribes cannabis as a medication. A backdating issue? What's that? What, a policy change to get rid of a backdating issue. What's that? Do you know? Who does? We do. So, it's our cause of action B. I'll come to later. We did it. They came up with a policy change to moot our cause of action B. So, the Johns Guard Brown decision. In late January, a federal court judge had called on Health Canada to review its processing timelines for renewals of medical cannabis permits that allow patients to grow their own bud at home. In a ruling on Johns Guard versus Canada, one of a number of similar cases before the court where a medical cannabis patient asked for emergency relief, if you're asking for emergency relief, that was a motion. Your claim is for damages during the delay, but an interim motion is to give me a damn permit right away, please. That's what emergency relief means. Alleging processing delays. Judge Brown prodded the regulator to look into its processing speed. 10 paragraph. The potential consequences of delay caused me to suggest that Health Canada review any existing processing timelines and mechanisms to see that they are met, he wrote. In addition, Health Canada might consider giving notice of expected delays. Can you imagine? Hey, we're going to be delayed with your permit renewal. Better destroy your grow and not get busted. Big help, right? Telling us there are going to be delays. So, Brown also suggested permit renewals should be done through administrative work, not court cases. Nine, rights have been declared. I suggest they are best afforded through administrative procedures and should not require excessive judicial intervention, he wrote, which means you screw up ought to get your act together so patients don't keep running to me, saying you're violating their rights with these delays. Paragraph one, seven, and eight, they add the screw up should get their act together. Here's what he says. This is not the first time that this court has been asked for emergency relief allegedly caused by delay on the part of Health Canada in processing applications to renew what I call personal production permits under the Access to Cannabis for Medical Purposes and Regulations. Two. Now, in Terry's case, it was a renewal. In other cases, it's just, you know, eight months for a permit. Come on. So... Two, in this case, the plaintiff obtained a one-year personal production permit on February the 1st, which would and did expire on January 19th. The plaintiff says he applied for its renewal October, but I accept the fact that his renewed application is dated November 29, less than two months before his original permit expired. Okay, eight weeks. In the old days, it was done in under two. So, 
Three, the plaintiff says, okay, four, that said, upon expiry of his license, he became liable to fine and imprisonment. Note these are criminal sanctions. If he did not destroy product on hand, this could engage liberty interests protected by Section 7 of the Charter. Five, as of January 24th, plaintiff did not know his renewal application was granted or refused, and so he came to this court asking emergency relief. As a result of today's urgent hearing and the defendant's filing earlier today, we now know the plaintiff's permit was renewed on January 22nd and sent to him by regular mail. So it was renewed three days after it expired and he'd been supposed to have torn down his grow or be bustable. And they sent it to him by snail mail. So that said, and as mentioned, this is not the first time such emergency relief has been sought from the federal court. And in addition, this is not the first time an urgent hearing has been scheduled by the court to address alleged delay. Eight, I'm not satisfied that proceeding as we have today and on the other occasions is an entirely efficient way to proceed, either for the court or the parties, including the defendant and their counsel. 11. In the circumstances, I'm satisfied the present motion has been rendered moot as a result of the renewal of the plaintiff's license. So, mooted by a hop to it three days after it expired. Now, others were mooted on the date they were to expire. I mean, if they got it on the date, they renewed it because they filed a motion. Everybody who files a motion before they get to the judge, the plaintiff really wants, I mean, the defendant really wants to get it off the judge's desk. So they hop to it so far, except for one guy, you know, Salandi. They told the judge they weren't hopping to it. It's going to be done in normal procedure, and they did it the next week. The main case about application delays is still being reviewed. What's this main case? Oh, didn't mention the damages. But Brown dismissed the John's Guard case without costs because the permit was eventually renewed. Doesn't that make it sound like all these cases are about getting their permits renewed and apply and registered and not a word about damages? So do tell us about the main case. Now, Terry's case was a motion and he got it. So the, all of those people who wanted their permits renewed or granted before they saw the judge got them. But their cases for damages go on. Now, not all the plaintiffs filed motions. Like a whole bunch of them waited a week and even got their permits within a week and didn't have to file motions. Some did just for the fun of making them hop and find out why they took the delays. So, all right, now back to the thing. More than 28 Canadian cannabis patients from across Canada had filed similar, if nearly identical, federal court claims based off a template downloaded from a website. Now, this is lying because there are actually 113 filed when the article came out, now up to 125, which, yeah, is more than 28. You get the difference between lying and lying. Lying is using the truth to mislead, okay? And that's using the truth to mislead and say more than 28 when the number is 113. And notice they can't say the site. They can't say johntermel.com slash kits. Why? Well, there's been a blackout on me for many years. I've been telling you that. Back in 2014, when I had 300 people, self people in federal court demanding their permits back, they talked about how they couldn't contact me. You know, I wasn't available near my phone or my internet. And then back in 2003, when I made them drop 4,000 charges, that also, they couldn't find me. They'd said a case in Toronto. Didn't even mention I got a file. Mention. So anyway, here it is. A website with templates as where these droves of people are getting their forms. Now, and they're alleging processing delays are an infringement on their charter rights. Well, you got double cancer patient Donald Cote waited eight months before they told them, oh, chiropractor doesn't count, got to get a different doctor. Eight months. Igor, 11 months. Six months, they didn't even get to it. Spend a month getting another doctor, then four more months on the next one before he had to file a statement of claim. That's terrible. 11 months. Now, a number of cases have been declared moot. No, none of the cases. The motions for interim remedy, like Terry, were declared moot, but not damages for the delay. However, since the respective patients received their permit renewals after they pursued legal action. So, moot after you pursued legal action and got your permit. 
but that's not the cases. That's just the motions. And of course, Salandy, Nathan, he had filed a motion. The only guy they fought on, and seven weeks, not eight. And they said, well, you're just going to have to wait. Now, the, we filed our motion. The Crown filed the response where the Health Canada guy said, you just got to wait for normal procedures. And then we filed our reply. And the judge handed down his decision. So you didn't wait long enough. Come back in, a, you know, whenever you want later when it's waited longer. And in the meantime, we found out that they sent it out on the 3rd of April by snail mail which made us file a reply for nothing and made Judge Brown file a decision for nothing on a, dis on a case, on a motion for, to renew his thing now, which had already been done, and they didn't tell us about it. So Nathan filed a motion to censure the defendant for not having disclosed that they'd issued the permit in time to avoid our having to file a reply and the judges having to put in a weekend come up with the answer. Health Canada said in a statement last week there are 13 active cases before the court concerning delays. More claims have been filed since then. 113 active cases before the court, not 13, and it's up to 125 now. All right. Judge Brown is handling the cases in collective case management through Alan J. Harris versus Her Majesty the Queen, a case which has been proceeding through the courts since September last year. He was designated lead plaintiff because he knows his stuff. He was a f former gold star. Anyway, Harris's statement of claim argues processing time has been lagging because staff have been swamped by many applications. Well, you got skyrocketing, ballooning, swamping, not in the early days. That wasn't the reason. Now, they also mentioned, um, the document argues that over five months to key in the information of the computer is excessive. And not enough staff is a lame excuse to delay the processing of medicinal purpose. Problem. So anyway, that's Jeff's claim. They stalled his application five months. They stalled his wife's application seven months. And they stalled Igor 11 months. But mention the five months. You know, when the worst is more than double as bad. Limited hangout again. Uh, the defense argues, oh, he had a defense. He talked to them but didn't talk to us. The defense argues the claim fails to disclose a reasonable cause of action. Not getting your meds on time, that's not reasonable to complain about that, you know. And it should be struck because it's scandalous, frivolous, and vexatious. So, it's vexatious to claim that Health Canada should speed up and that people are dying, they're feeling vexed. And it's frivolous for us to complain about bureaucracy. And it's scandalous to say they're screw-ups who are causing people to die, maybe. Anyway. The pleadings do not contain any facts concerning the plaintiff's personal circumstances or capable of supporting the constitutional violations alleged, the Crown wrote in its statement of defense, adding that Harris fails to explain why he requires a personal production permit and cannot instead purchase cannabis from a licensed producer. Well, first of all, there's no statement of defense yet. Okay, that comes after they f their motion to strike as frivolous gets thrown out. But that's all they got. They're saying that all of these people complaining about these huge delays, frivolous and vexatious, that's it. That means it's too funny to be bothered with. Just throw it out because it's silly. That's the only defense they got. And they're saying, ah, uh, things are frivolous and vexatious, no cause of action, when you don't have enough facts to make your case. Well... All the only facts I had my people submit was the date of effective and the date of expiry, which showed you how long was subtracted by the processing time. So, that's how it worked. What more did I need? Oh, they say, we need to know his personal circumstances. We got to know what his sickness is to know whether it took too long. Or another one, we got to know why other chemical drugs weren't used first before pot. And finally, we got to know why he chose self-grow instead of going to buy it from an LP before we can know whether it took too long. These are not relevant things they are calling facts that are missing while they don't even mention the facts we provided, which are the dates. And we're talking about, did it take too long? 
What more do you need? Do you need but the dates? You don't need to know his illness. It'll take too long. You don't need to know why chems didn't work. It'll take too long. You don't need to know what route he chose. He wanted cheaper self-grow than paying taxes and licensing and bags and advertising from the LPs. It's cheaper to make it at home. That wasn't explained, but they should know to know whether it took too long to process his permit or not. That's how stupid they are. Anyway, uh, so, and that's the only thing they got. Frivolous and vexatious because he didn't tell us what, what his sickness was and why chems didn't work and why he chose self-growth. Frivolous and vexatious without that data. So, applications for homegrown medical cannabis surged last year. Behind the scenes, those homegrown medical pot permit applications and renewals have been increasing exponentially, straining the system. Hey, Igor found the system strained at the beginning of 2017, not the end. So, and it was, it was skyrocketing and it was ballooning and it was swamping and it was surging, but none of that caused it because it was short staffing all the way. Now, the good stuff, the lies. The number of active registrations doubled in the last half of 2017, increasing sharply from 6880 at the end of June to 13,829 by September. Wow, that sounds like they went from 7,000 to 14,000, doesn't it? And they got a chart. April, 4,400. 4, May, 5,200. June, 6,800. July, 8,800. August, 10,500. September, 11,600. October, 11,800. Wow, only 200? November, 13,001. And December, 13,008. Wow, it went from 8,000, sorry, 7,000 at the end of June to almost 14,000 at the end of December. Double. Right? Wrong. <laughs> this is the graph from the article. Now, these are not totals. These are rates, monthly rates. So, look at you got distance, which is the number of meters walked. And you got velocity, which is like 50 meters an hour. And you got acceleration, which is how fast the velocity is changing. Well, you don't have, it goes from 4,000 permits to 13,000 over the year. No, 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 no. You add X, you got 13,000, 14,000 permits in December. You got 13,000 permits in November. You got 12,000 permits in October. You got 70,000 permits in the last six months. And there were only 20,000 permits before then to end up with 90,000 permits now. So, or before then. So here's the point. This is rates. This is not number of permits. So the rate doubled from 7,000 a month to 14,000 a month. But they dropped that it's a rate and they made it sound like it's the totals. So that's how they trick you. So when they tell you that it went from 7,000 to 14,000, the number of registrations doubled it actually went from 20,000 to 90,000. The number of registrations went up by 350%, being handled by 75% more staff. Got it? So, it wasn't 75% staff to handle double. It was 75% to handle three and a half times more. Got it? Wow, 350%. So that's 70,000 compared to 20. And you, people don't know it. Now, anyway, that is how they've lied with that by using not register. It says registrations, but it's per month, okay? And that's why if you do it. But what's interesting is if you do take the June and December, it happens to be 101%. So the lie was built on the false statistics that these are active registrations. And what does active mean? Those are the ones that were pro processed. Now, Nathan was told he'd have to wait and the reason he's got a statement of claim originally was the lady who spoke to McClurk said it's going to take another 26 weeks. That's why he moved right away. So 
That means that you're talking five months worth of people sitting in the mailroom still, and at 13,000 a month, 14,000 in December, and you expect it to be going up, same amount. Hey, five times 14, 70,000 people still in the mailroom if it takes six months to get out. So that is the kind of stuff that's happening. So it's 90,000, and it was 108,000, Nathan's registration at the beginning of April. So nowhere near 101% being dealt with by 75% staff, it's 350% increase. So, Health Canada said it aims to process registrations as quickly as possible, but processing times can take anywhere from 8 to 16 weeks, depending on the complexity of the application. Well, aiming isn't attaining, we know that. And the six-month delay, 15 months a goal for Igor, it just goes to show that the problem was systemic from the start. And 16 weeks, it's the first time they mentioned more than 10 anywhere. So they've now put it back and said, wow, now don't be complaining if it's 16, all right? Well, guess what? It's the numbers rising. It used to be eight, eight months, sorry, months. Wow, four months, now six months, seven months, 11 months. So, and people don't know. They think it's going to be 16 weeks, the new high. The time to review an application and issue a registration certificate is highly dependent on the number of applications received, the quality of the completeness of the application, spokesperson Tammy Jarbo said in an email. It also depends on the response time of applicants or healthcare practitioners who may be contacted by our client service representatives to verify information or to request additional clarification. The department must also verify that an original medical document accompanies the application and that the healthcare practitioner is in good standing with their province or territory's medical regulatory authority. Wow, so much to do. And it's exactly the same stuff they had to do under the MMAR when it took four weeks. Got it? It doesn't take that long to do that list of things. It just doesn't. Except if you're waiting six months in the mail room first. Before being told, oh, wrong doctor, eight months. Okay, before uh, Donald Cote got told, hey, Cairo doesn't count, eight months. So you waited in the mail room most of that time, you know, it certainly wasn't on somebody's desk. And so now since home growing was reinstated for patients in August, 2016, Health Canada processed almost 40,000 applications. <laughs> we thought it was 13 from his graph. Now he's telling us it's 40. Well, if he adds the numbers on his own graph, he'll find out it's 90. Anyway, another mistake off by uh, what, 100%? So, and now it's 108K as of April. So, Jarbo said processing times are improving after bringing on more staff. Yeah, 75% more staff doing 350% more applications. Times are improving. <laughs> if you believe it. That's why Nathan got told he's still six months in the mailroom. And the department is looking at other ways to process applications more efficiently to better inform the public of what needs to accompany applications to develop effective performance targets. After 17 years of trying, they're going to find something new. <laughs> so here's the good stuff. Policy change. Okay. Health Canada changed the processing policy in March to remove prescription backdating issues. What issues? What are prescription backdating issues? Well, here it is. Could be our cause of action B. B, we want a declaration that backdating the period of registration and renewal from the effective date for registration or expiry date for renewals, as under the MMAR, to the date the doctor signed under the ACMPR, violates the patient section 7 charter rights and claims remedy for the full term of the prescription to take effect on the effective date of registration and on the expiry date of a renewed registration like the health card driver's license and mmar you got it under the mmar when you got your permit it was good for a year and after that, you could renew three months in advance, four months in advance, two months in advance, whatever. It continued from that year, like your driver's license. But some government gremlin decided, I know how we can screw the patients. What we're going to do is, when we got the expiry date, we're going to pick the, 
sorry, the effective date. We're going to pick the expiry date not a year away from the effective date. We'll pick it a year away from the date the doctor signs. And that way, they lose the 5 and the 6 and the 8 and the 11 months it takes to process the permits. So, they changed the policy from giving people a full-term prescription to short-changing them for the time it took to process. Someone did that on purpose. And they're later going to argue, oh, I didn't realize what they were doing, you know. So anyway, that, but that's what he calls the backdating issue, okay. That's when they start the permit on the date the doctor signed, even though you can't start growing until the effective date when it's issued. And that way you got to go back to the doctor in three months instead of a year, right? Always cost you. So that is the issue he's talking and now he calls it backdating issues there's only one issue he's ripping off our time by backdating to the doctor one issue and that's what we've asked for so our plaintiffs have all asked to have her full term restituted got it now after hearing from patients that the time it takes to process an application can reduce the period of time available to produce a limited amount of cannabis for medical purposes According to the Health Canada document, got that? They changed the policy after hearing from patients that, geez, they're losing some of the time on their permits. It never occurred to the, these people that they were subtracting the time off their permits. They had to hear from the patients to tell them it takes the time off their permits. Well, actually, they read it from our patients that it's taken time off their permit. And the only person they heard it from was Judge Brown, who said, I want an explanation for the backdating in your response. Which is why they had to come up with the Section 56 order to fix it. Because they got to walk in with their response and say, we have mooted their claim by giving them back their time. Our 100 people, 125, asked for their time back now they got to give it back well the best way to do it is just quietly say we've stopped ripping you off but just don't tell anybody we're giving it back though it is being given back they get a little letter saying oh your thing now goes the full permit so anyway after hearing from patients no they heard they read it from the patients they heard it from the judge you know and again they forgot to mention the restitution we are seeking Finally, the same document which gets sent to patients tells them processing time can take in excess of eight weeks to process an application and issue a registration. And that's true. Eight weeks, in excess of eight weeks, 18 weeks, 28 weeks, 48 weeks, they're all in excess of eight weeks. That's the difference between lying and lying. So finally, according to an email from the Department of Justice's litigation sector, nothing from the patients ever okay, Health Canada and the lawyers, the policy change, ah, that our people are demanding, cause B, will ensure that processing times do not shorten the length of time the registration certificate is valid, and allows Health Canada to issue registration certificates that will last a full year. So, they changed it back to the way it used to be under the MMAR, before some gremlin tried to hurt everybody and did. It argues that one court case in particular, which alleged delays arising from permit backdating, should be considered moot. Wow! One! When uh, over a hundred demanded it and over 90,000 got it, and they're only admitting one person got backdated? <laughs> that is the ultimate limited hangout to say that a fix by the minister for 90,000 patients permits only really affected one. <laughs> oh, Jesus we told him that. Anyway, task force. The government's consulting task force recommended that Ottawa monitor and evaluate patients' right to a reasonable access to cannabis when Bill C-45 comes into force. This is the task force who didn't notice that, gee, by subtracting the time it takes to process off the permits, they don't get as much pot for their permits, do they? This is the task force that didn't have anybody with any math background. So, now, of course, the motions are made to get their attention. Statement of claims for the value 
And don't forget, most people find the value of the pot hard to visualize. How are you going to claim it? You know, so my prescription time is the amount it was charged at the LPs. And they're going to want to argue with us. But how much you spent on your rent sitting idle, that must have really gouged and really hurt you. Because Justin's in there to impede the little guys and help the big guys corner the market. And that means that if they can stall, force you to get a grow site right away before you apply and then take six, eight, ten months before they get it to you, who knows it? Might be able to bust a bunch of you little guys, right? So, finally, the regulation that one guy can only grow for two people means that little guys can't get a grower, can they? They're forced to go to the high-priced LPs. So, these... People, these gremlins who do this kind of stuff. Look, at these are the same guys who came up with the regulation that if you don't like the pot from your LP, they won't give you back your prescription. You got to go back to the doctor, get a brand new, and start over. I mean, these people are sick, malevolent, who are running this system in Health Canada. And, you know, I hope you've been puked out by what you've seen right here. So, but they managed to hide the fact that. Our hundred people screaming about being shortchanged on their permits forced the minister to issue the biggest Section 56 exemption for a class in history, and they're trying to cover it up. But they can't cover it up because the judge says, I want you to explain the backdating in your response by... 25th, 26th of this month, April. Then we get two weeks to respond and tear them apart. So this is their motion to strike as frivolous and vexatious. And the judge specifically said, explain the backdating. Their only way to do that, to say that these people's cause of action B need now not be dealt with, is because we already caved and we gave it to them already. It's been mooted. But... They're trying to hide it so nobody finds out about the biggest Section 56 class exemption in Canadian history. Won by a bunch of self-defenders on our own. Thank you, my 125 stalwart warriors. And we can keep adding to the team for anybody who wants to have their stuff back. You got delayed improperly way too much. Six months, eight months, ten months when it used to be four. Put in a claim. More people, more chance we all get cash. I wish I could, you know, participate. I can't in this one. But anyway, johntermelcom slash kits will lead you to the kit you need for either slow amendments or slow pros, you know, uh, permits and renewals. It's all there and you can join the team and add to their nightmare as they really deserve. So, oh, the final funniest part of all. All along, for all my years, I have always raised it a violation of the patient's rights to have to go back for yearly renewals. It costs money. Patient, patients with permanent diseases should not have to go back for renewals every year. But now they do. And that means that next year, they got to deal with all 90,000 renewals <laughs> they never expected so not only were all and they got to do it every year those 90,000 are every year they got to process them with another 100,000 next year and another after that so they have they have cut their own throats by putting in the rule that everybody's going to renew every year now that the numbers have gone wild and remember if you're sitting there waiting for your permit Judge Brown really laid into them, said people renewing deserve your attention first. They've already qualified and they become liable to prison and penal sanctions if you don't get it to them on time. Unlike people who are just waiting. It's illegal and, until they get it anyway. So if you're sitting there waiting, enjoy your wait. If you don't join the team and demand action, you're going to get a lot more wait than you expected.